Jessie here. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. I would love it if you would take a minute and click that subscribe button. I post new budgeting and lifestyle content here on my channel practically every day these days. Today's video is going to be my budget results for the first paycheck in the month of March. I have in front of me my budget by paycheck workbook pages which I have punched and put into my Happy Planner disc bound system here in my Franken Planner. I wrote out this budget in a video last week. I went through and talked about how much money we were putting towards each of our categories. So if you missed that video, you're going to want to click the um, card above here and go and check it out. For today's video, we're going to be looking at my budgeted amounts and comparing them to what I actually spent. We're going to fill in these actual columns here and we're going to figure out whether I was over budget or under budget. We'll be going into my cash envelopes, counting out any cash that I have left. We'll also be taking a look at my transaction log here in my monthly planner from Erin Condren so you can see where all of the money was spent. So yeah, we're just going to be kind of reconciling the budget today and I'm excited. So if I am under budget, I will be writing the actual amounts in black ink. That's what I like to do. I like to be able to take a look at my worksheet here and very easily see whether I was over budget or under budget. So black means I did good. If I'm over budget, I'll be writing in this red pen. It's always my hope not to have to use the red ink, but we have it here just in case. These pens are from the brand Parku. I get them on Amazon. I do have them linked down below, as well as everything else that I can link for you guys. Um, so if you want to have a similar budget set up, you can, um, you know, click those links and purchase these things. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So the first category we're going to be looking at here is this bills category. Under my bills category, I put, yep, all of my bills, but also anything else that I pay using my checking account. I do a lot of my budgeting in cash. You guys will see that as we kind of move through this worksheet, but anything under this bills category is what stays in my checking account. So. I keep track of all of that right here in my transaction log. This is the calendar of the Erin Condren monthly planner. I set this up at the start of the month. These stickers here are from Caffeinated Kate Printables. I absolutely love her stickers. And then I use stickers that I made for myself in a color coding system to keep track of my transactions. So. Anytime that I pay a bill, I put that down here in my little calendar using a blue sticker. Anything pink here is groceries. This light purple indicates gas transactions. Any extra debt payments are in this um, kind of light gray color here. The dark purple indicates my personal spending money. Yellow is eating out. This green is miscellaneous. Anything that I take out of sinking funds is in orange. Anything unbudgeted is this dark pink. And then anything above and beyond that is in this navy blue. So we're looking at this first week in the month of March. My husband and I use a paycheck budgeting system. So we budget paycheck to paycheck. So we're looking at everything that came in between my husband's first paycheck and then the second paycheck which will start our new week. So all of these transactions here are what we're going to look at today. Starting with grocery. So when I wrote out my budget, I budgeted $150 for groceries and I had a couple of transactions here. So what I'm going to do is pull in my trusty calculator and I just use the one on my phone and we're going to add up all the transactions and see how much I spent for the week. So here I have $112.02 and then we also have this one here for $37.79. Those are all of the transactions for the week so we're going to add those up and I spent $149.81. So pretty darn close. 
but still under budget, which is good. So I'm just going to put that actual total in here. And then we're going to move on to the next thing here, which is my Weight Watchers. I mentioned when I filmed that budget video that I actually don't have to pay a bill this month because one of you guys clicked my link and signed up for Weight Watchers. If you are interested in signing up for Weight Watchers, you can get your first month free if you use my link down below, and I will also get a free month. So one of you guys did that, you took advantage of that deal, and that meant that for March, I don't have a Weight Watchers bill to pay. So that came in at zero, just as expected. Next up, I have Netflix. Now, Netflix is a bill that isn't actually due this week. If we look back at my little calendar here, you can see that when I figured out what bills I was going to pay with this paycheck, I chose to pay a few of these bills in advance. So I took the money for that Netflix bill out of this paycheck, but it's not actually due yet. So it hasn't been paid. What I do in that scenario is I take the cash from my main checking account and I transfer it to a secondary account, which is sort of like a holding place for that money. So that it is out of my regular budget, I don't see it and think I have more money than um, I actually have. And then when these bills actually come due, I will take that money from that account to make these payments. So for now, it hasn't been paid, but I did set that money aside. The way that I indicate that in my book here is I put the sticker down, but I don't check it off. So that means that the money's in the account, but it has not been paid yet. Even so, I did take $14 out of this budget, so that is just as anticipated. The same with Hulu. For Hulu, I budgeted $6, and I set aside that $6 for when that payment comes due. Disney Plus is $7, and I did set aside the $7 for that. For HBO Max, that was $16. That is a bill that I was able to pay, and as you can see here, it got the check mark. I budgeted $16. That actually came out at $15.84, so we are under budget there. Next up is Spotify. I had mentioned in my budget video that I was contemplating canceling that, and I did indeed cancel it before the payment was due, so I budgeted $16, but what we actually spent was zero. I also left myself a little note over here reminding me that I did cancel Spotify Premium. Um, and of course, you can see here that I also transferred money to my bill pay account for Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, car insurance, and bike insurance. So that's just another way for me to remind myself that that's what I did. So next up then we have Boost. This is my mobile phone bill. I budgeted $130 and I was able to pay that. It was $130 just as expected. For my camper payment, I made that as well. I budgeted $200 and that was in fact 200 as expected. As I mentioned in my little note, car insurance and motorcycle insurance were both things that I took money out of this paycheck for and just set it aside for when that is due. So for car insurance, I budgeted 165 and that is what I set aside. And for bike insurance, 35 and that is what I set aside there as well. Someone asked me the last time I talked about this, what happens if this bill comes due then and it's less than you expect? You set aside this money, what do you do with the leftover? That I will just likely leave in that second account as sort of a buffer. Um, I like to have a buffer in all of my accounts just in case my math is a little off one week or something comes in a little bit higher or a little bit lower than I expect. Um, I like to be able to make the ends meet no matter what the scenario is. So if that um, car insurance bill comes in and it's only 164, then that dollar will stay in that account and start building up a buffer for that account. I hope that that makes sense. So that was car insurance, bike insurance. Lastly, I had Audible. I had written this down um, thinking that it hadn't been paid yet, but actually I had paid it in a previous um, 
budget, so it was taken care of. I did not need to pay it again, so that's good. So that is it for the bills. All black ink, which is good. That means that we are under budget in this bills category. Let's find out how much. So I'm just going to add these actual amounts up. So we have 149.81 plus 14 plus 6 plus 7 plus 15.84 plus 130 plus 200 plus 165 plus 35 for a total of 722.65. I had budgeted 754 total. So if we take that 722.65 from the 754 that I budgeted, that means we are actually $31.35 under budget, which is awesome. Anytime that I come in under budget, that amount goes right to an extra debt payment. So this $31.35, we're going to transfer over here to this extra debt section, and that is going to be made as an extra debt payment, which is so exciting. So I'm just going to write that in then as my actual amount. We didn't budget anything for that. Obviously, um, I did not know I was going to have money left over, but since I do, rather than taking that $31 and just spending it on something frivolous, we're going to do something useful with it, and we're going to pay it to the card that I'm currently working on paying off, which is an Amazon card. We'll talk some more about this extra debt category in a little bit, but for now, we're going to move on to cash envelopes. So for cash envelopes, this is all of the cash that I pull out at the start of the week, and I expect that this money will get spent. These are our um, things that we need money for every single week, our spending money, our gas money, that sort of thing. So I have my cash envelopes here in my conscious wallet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into each of my envelopes, and we're going to see what I have left, if anything, and we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with that leftover money. So we're gonna start with my husband spending. His money obviously is not in my envelope. I give that to him at the start of the week, and he does whatever he wants with it. I never expect to see receipts for what he spent it on. I never expect him to give me any of it back. He never comes and asks for more money. It's just, I give him $40. If he doesn't spend it all, he rolls it over into the next week. If he runs out of money early, then he's out of luck until we get paid again. That's the way it works. We discussed long ago how much money he wanted to have every week to feel comfortable with this whole budgeting journey, and that's what we decided on, $40. Next up is my spending money. Just like my husband, I get $40 as well. I start each week by putting it right here in my spending envelope. You can see there is some cash left in there. Um, I also keep track of my spending right here in my transaction log. So I track my spending in this purple color because purple is my absolute favorite color. And you can see here on Saturday, I made a purchase for $14. Um, I used my spending money to buy the stickers that I'm going to need for my April budget. I'm already thinking about April, even though we're only in the first week of March. That's just how my brain works. I like to be prepared for things. So I spent $14, and that is the only transaction I am showing here. So I started out with $40. I spent $14. That means that there should be $26 left. So I'm just going to then go into my envelope and make sure that that is, in fact, what I have. So these envelopes are from... Erica Life Vlogs. I absolutely love her channel and I love these envelopes. They are so pretty. I love being able to see the cash right through them. I pulled out my spending money here and I do have 26 as expected. 20, 25, 26. So this money that I have left over, I'm going to transfer I'm not going to leave it in my spending envelope. I like to just have my $40 a week. If I have money left over, I like to allocate it elsewhere. 
So what I'm going to do with that $26 is transfer it into my sinking fund that I have for my Nintendo Switch. That's what I've decided to do with any of my leftover spending money right now. So I have this envelope here that I keep in my accordion folder where I keep all of our sinking funds. And this is where I have been setting money aside to save for Nintendo Switch games, um, accessories, that sort of thing. Right now this fund has $10 in it. And we're going to add this other... I think I'm just actually going to add 20 to my Nintendo Switch fund. And this other six I will set aside and we will do something else with that. So today is March 8th. I just like to put the date down, how much money I'm adding to the fund, which is $20. And that means then that my Nintendo Switch fund has a total of $30. Anytime that I add money to a fund, I always like to count it. So 20, 30. And that means that that's accurate. And this will go back into my accordion folder. My envelope is starting to fall apart. I need to make a new one, but it'll work for now. This then will go right back into my accordion folder with the rest of my sinking funds. And I will have it then whenever I'm ready to buy another game for my Switch. So that takes care of my spending. So now we're gonna move on to the next category, which is gas. So I always budget $40 at the start of each week for gas. We drive a Subaru Forester from empty with gas prices being what they are right now. It costs about $40 to fill my tank. And as you can see here, I did in fact fill my tank today or this week on Sunday and it did cost me the full $40. So I spent 40. That means that this envelope should be completely empty. And if we flip to it here in my wallet, you can see that it is, or you could see if it wasn't such a glare. My apologies. I have lots of lights on to be able to light up this video for you guys today. All right, next up we have my eating out category. It has been my goal throughout March not to eat out at all. I'm still budgeting for it because I want to be able to have the money just in case I don't meet that goal and we do end up eating out. Um, but if we look at my transaction log here, you can see there are no yellow stickers. We have not used our eating out budget at all, which means that we should still have the full $25 in my envelope. So if we flip to this food envelope, you can see we do have the full $25. So I'm gonna set this off to the side with the other cash that I had left over in my spending envelope. And we'll talk about what we're gonna do with that once we get through all the rest of these categories. Next up, we have miscellaneous, which had $25 in it at the start of the week. We did have one transaction. I bought some supplies for painting. We are in the process of doing a few little home projects and I decided just to take the supplies that we needed out of my miscellaneous budget. So we started with 25, we spent 17, which means there should be $8 left in my um, envelope. So if we flip here to miscellaneous, we can see five, six, seven, there is in fact $8 left. So that will go ahead and put right over there with our other stack. Um, in terms of what's left here, I did give Austin his $20 for his allowance. I just set that aside and gave it to him at the start of the week. The same with my son Robert for his gas money. And so that was all as anticipated. So now that we've kind of finished going over everything here, let's figure out what we should have left. So I budgeted 205. How much did we actually spend? 40 plus 14 plus 40 plus 17 plus 20 plus 15 is 146. One, 
205 minus 146 means that we had $59 left over. We know that we put 20 into my switch fund, so that means there should be $39 left here that I set aside. So I'm just going to arrange this a little bit and then we'll count it up and see if that is what we have. So we have 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 dollars. So what are we going to do with this money? Well, I'll tell you, that's going to go for an extra debt payment as well. Usually what I do is if I have cash left over from any of my sinking funds, these are not sinking funds, if I have any cash left over from my cash envelopes, I will stick it right here in this debt snowball envelope and I will save it up till the end of the month and then I'll make one big lump payment with all of the leftover cash. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick this um, $39 right here in this debt envelope. You know what, you guys? When I was paying off my Discover card, it wasn't really a big deal to wait until the end of the month and make one big lump payment because we weren't paying interest on that card. It was an interest-free um, period on that card. But with the Amazon card that I'm working on right now, there is interest. So it doesn't really make sense if I have the money to wait until the end of the month to pay it. So rather than storing this up until the end of the month, I'm just gonna go ahead and deposit this in the bank and make that payment today along with the other um, extra debt payment from what's left over in my bills. So I'm still gonna stick this in my debt envelope just to differentiate it in my mind, but this I'm going to be taking to the bank right away and making that payment. I also have a ton of money to deposit from sinking funds and stuff that we've used this week. Um, we also put something on a credit card for my mother-in-law and she gave us cash for it. So I've got quite a bit of money to deposit this week to kind of true up our account. Anytime throughout the week that I have cash that I need to deposit, I just put it right here in my bank envelope and then I just go to the bank once a week. That's how I do it. It works out really great for me. So that's that. So I'm just going to really quickly leave myself a note and I'm gonna put it over here in these money thoughts. So we had 59 left over from our cash envelopes. Writing this very sloppy. So we put 20 to the switch fund and 39 then to extra debt. Again, if I don't leave myself a note, I will not remember. So that takes care of that. And we're gonna go ahead and do another line here under the extra debt for extra payments. I'm gonna draw myself a little arrow and I'm gonna say that we are gonna pay 39 then there as well. So we will add all of this up and get a grand total for our extra debt payments. Um, momentarily, but for now, let's go ahead and fill in the actual columns here for our sinking funds. If you watched my sinking fund stuffing video, my cash envelope stuffing, you would see that um, what is budgeted is what I actually put into each of those envelopes. So this will go really quick. This is all as budgeted. And if you missed that video, you can check it out. I will link it in a card above for you. Cash envelope stuffings are my absolute favorite videos to film and to watch. So that was 300 as expected. Now we have our extra debt. So if we look at my transaction log, you can see here I did pay the $210 to our Amazon card that should be checked off. Um, that is how much we aim to pay minimum to our card in extra payments. Um, so I did that at the start of the week, and now we can go ahead and add up these other payments I'm going to make and get a grand total for extra debt payments for the week. So we have 210 plus 3135 that we are going to take from what's left over for our bills, and then 39 
that we took that was left over from our cash envelopes, and the grand total that we will have paid extra in debt this week once I make those payments is $280.35, which is amazing. I am so excited about that. We're going to go ahead and highlight that because that is exciting. I only planned to put 210 towards it, but because I was able to have leftover money in these other categories, we used that extra money to make extra debt payments, and that is always a good thing. I'm not writing that in red because that's not a negative. Um, all right, next up, we have our extra savings. And once again, this was all as planned. And you would have seen that if you watched that um, stuffing video. So I did put $36 towards our 52 week savings. I did put $9 towards Saveopoly. 15 went to my card savings challenge. And then we had put $10 into the switch fund for a total of $70. And that is it, my friends. So you can see we did not have to use the dreaded red pen. Everything came out under budget or right on the money, which is fabulous. So happy to see that. It was a great week. I was able to put so much extra towards debt, which is exciting. Chipping away at that Amazon card that we are trying to get paid off as quickly as possible since we're paying so much interest on it. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope that you will give it a big thumbs up. That really helps out my channel. Anytime that you interact with my videos, you leave a like or a comment. It really helps me out a ton. It lets YouTube know you like my video and um, I appreciate it so much. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss a video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye friends.